Another time, another story. We were young, invincible, and carefree. We started a less complicated affair. Yes? Lance! Lance, what the hell is this? What do you mean, my dear? Don't be stupid, Lance. You know full well what I mean. This letter that you've left here. You're an intelligent woman. What does it look like? What? Dear Jane, I've had enough. I can't keep playing second fiddle to your career and everyone else. It's been 15 years and I can't take it anymore. So I'm leaving. Hopefully I will find someone who loves me for me and you will find a man who lives up to your expectations. Seems pretty self-explanatory to me. Okay, Lance, we need to talk about this. Let's sit down like two adults and discuss your insecurities and talk... Goodbye, Jane. I thought I was good at loving you Seas of doubt and lands of hate I thought that once I heard you say that So I thought I was good at loving you <coughs> Dr. Hart? Oh! Well this is what men like, isn't it? Bit of leg, yeah? Bit of breast? Bit of... Boob. Oh, look, Georgina, as faithful as you are to Lewis, look at him ogling me. That's because all men are the same. You think you know him, don't you? After 15 years of marriage, you think you know him? Well, you don't. And don't be surprised if one day he just up and leaves. No warning, no discussion, no nothing. Which is why, in my professional opinion, I'm suggesting you get out there. Get out there and find someone new. Now, Dr. Hart, don't go putting these ideas in my wife's head. But why not? You cheated on her. You violated your marriage vows, you destroyed her confidence. Why shouldn't she sample other items from the buffet? Oh, I don't think I could ever cheat on Lewis. Besides, he said he'd never do it again. Oh, get real, sister. Once a cheater, always a cheater. In fact, do you know what you should do? You should sleep with his best friend. Yeah. And once you've done that, tell all his other friends how much better his best friend is in bed than he is. <laughs> that should do it. were you planning on doing with that newspaper? Were you going to read the classifieds to the intruder till he begged for mercy? Oh, ha ha ha. You got nothing to eat, by the way. It's like starving. Yeah. Uh, no! Wait, what are you doing here again? I left Richard. Your husband, Richard? No, Richard, the one I bloat that works at the petrol station. Yeah, of course I mean my husband, Richard. Okay, Rhonda, I say this with love and respect. Are you daft? Of the three husbands you've had, Richard was the nicest. It was nothing like Bernard or... Andrew? No, exactly. That's what I mean. Richard is... Well, he's too nice. 
So let me get this straight. You have a husband who treats you like a queen, who worships the very air molecules you exhale, and your reward for him being such a great husband is you walk out on him? Are you so into dysfunctional men and dysfunctional relationships that you get a great guy and you just have to walk out? Well, I wouldn't expect you to understand, would I? I mean, you've got Lance and your perfect marriage. Well, what would you know about heartbreak or dysfunctional relationships? <sighs> Lance left me. What? Lance left you? <gasps> he left a note on the pillow this morning. What did it say? Well, it doesn't matter. I mean, we've spoken, and as far as he's concerned, it's over. There's nothing more I can do about it. Wow. Wow. And this is such a shocker for me. I mean, I guess I just thought you always had it so together. So did I. Well, I guess I was wrong. Anyway, enough about me. What about you? What are you going to do now that you've left Richard? Well, I could stay here with my big sister. No, 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 no. Jane! Please! You've got this massive house all to yourself. I wouldn't take up that much room. And besides, you know, I haven't got anywhere else to go. Please, Janie. Please. <sighs> all right, but on condition you behave responsibly and you at least try and fix whatever's going on between you and Richard. Thank you. You won't regret this. I know you won't. I already do. I'll work on that from tomorrow and see how it goes. All righty then. Good luck. Well, it's uh, ten past nine and you're listening to Heart to Heart with your host, Dr Jane Hart. Just to remind our listeners that the topic for today is honesty is the best policy. Let's take a caller, shall we? Lydia, who do we have on the line? We have your husband, Lance, on line three. Dr Jane Hart. Oh, hello there, sweetie. You are such a fraud. How can you give people relationship advice when your own marriage is in shambles? Uh, sweetheart, my producer is signalling to me that we must go for a commercial break. Well, until the commercials start, maybe I should tell your listeners I left you two weeks ago because you were so busy fixing other people's relationships. Oh, technical hitch. We seem to have lost Lance. I'm very sorry, sweetheart, but we'll talk about this when we get home, which, of course, we can do because we still live in the same house. Right, let's take another caller, shall we? This is Dr Jane Hart, you're on the air. Dr Hart, is it true what your husband just said? Is your marriage really falling apart? Are you getting a divorce? Oh please, he didn't say anything about divorce. <laughs> Why would you think that? How can you give the public advice when you can't even manage to get your own marriage to work? All this time you claim to be an expert, when your husband rings in... Oh, technical hitch. I don't know what is going on with this switchboard today, but we seem to have lost that caller as well. I do believe that we're coming to the end of the programme. Lydia, how much time do we have left? An hour and 45 minutes. Love every day for the past week. So I like it. No. This pity party has got to stop. It's been two weeks since that incident at the radio station. You've got to stop feeling sorry for yourself. Hey, you need to get off this sofa. Well, you, you need to take a shower. No, I'm not doing any of that. Jane. I'm going to sit here and I'm going to cry till I die. Jane, <laughs> I've known you all my life. You're strong and, and courageous. Remember what you used to say to me when we were young? That you used to say that our family was full of failed marriages and that you were going to be the one to prove that marriage can work. Yeah, well, newsflash, I was wrong. Marriage doesn't work. It's just an elaborate scheme to make people feel guilty for sleeping around. Oh, Jane. Do you know, the past two weeks have been a nightmare. Do you know what it's like to have every media host, every, every TV show, every newspaper poking fun at my failed marriage? I'm a laughing stock. My practice is nearly over. My radio show is finished. Did you know that people built a bonfire and burned my books? Yeah, I know it was there, but listen, I've got some advice for you. If you've never heard anything I've said before, you need to listen to this. Yeah, it's going to change your life, give you a fresh perspective, and you know, hopefully cheer you up a bit. Go on then, what is it? Damn, I thought we'd come up with something. 
Oh, Rhonda, go away. Oh, at least come to church with me on Sunday. No, I'm not coming to church. All those judgmental people. I'm better off out here. Oh, look, I know you've got your reservations about religion, but since I've been going to church and reading my Bible, yeah, I'm, a, I'm on a path to peace. I've left my sordid past behind me. I'm, I'm more calm. I'm, I'm less violent. Yeah, going to church made me a new person. Rhonda. Oh, God. We have to try again I got this broken heart that I gotta mend I gotta put it all together Piece by piece again Maybe you could help me and make me whole again I have to be just one But still be whole And God knows I had a, I had a bitter soul When I saw you I felt young Like my life had just begun Guess I thought maybe, maybe, maybe you're the one Well, maybe, baby, I could see into the future Maybe it was just a coincidence I knew you, but then when you looked at me I knew God a bigger Oh yeah. 